when I rise up, and when I'm going out, and when I'm coming in, and before I lay down, I turn toward the temple and pray, yeah, I turn toward the temple and pray, yeah, I got a message straight from the Father, we go tell all of them bad boy, yeah. Hanging out on the street corner, waiting to slay their own brother. Bombs are go draw, man better than man. Yeah, your fire are go burn. And when I see their wicked way, yeah, I turn toward the temple and pray. Yeah, I turn toward the temple and pray. All over, I've seen the preachers preaching in the churches, taking all the glory, attacking all the naughty, liberty for Yahshua. And when I see their wicked ways, yeah, I turn toward the temple and pray. Toward the temple and pray. I turn toward the temple and pray. Yeah, 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 yeah. I turn toward the temple and pray. Twelve tribes of Jacob scattered all over your world. A seed take root in a jam dung and it spring up all over the place. Yeah. Take a look around you. Some of them said I'm a rasta. Some of them said I'm a bad boy. But it's a trouble when them find out where they see the Joseph. Yeah. Leave it for Yeshua. That's all we have as a rasta. Rasta, 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 rasta. When I rise up. And when I'm going out. And when I'm coming in. And before I lay down. Children of the Almighty, and we will 
Let's give thanks some praise to the most, you know? The more have to come this trial, they never build, you know? You know, very... Israel, the Father Owe Elohim is one Father. And thou should love the Father Elohim with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So we say Shalom and Erev Tov. Welcome to the Hero Israel Bible Broadcast. Today is Sunday, the 21st of July. Thereabouts, those of you who are on the Roman Watch. Those of you who are on the Biblical Watch, it's the 21st day of the fourth month, fourth Biblical month, uh, referred to after the uh, return of the Jews from Babylon as the month of Tammuz. As we begin this evening, we'd like to remind you that the views that you hear on this program are not the views of the station, the management of the station, or any other medium in which you might be listening to the program, but are the views of Hero Israel. We we'll greet you, brethren, in the name of the Father, Yah, as it is written in Psalm 68, verse 4, declaring by his name, Yah. We also greet you in terms of the, send you greetings from the seven spirits before the throne of the Father. The seven spirits which we understand to be the seven spirits of wisdom that was there in the beginning with him, that when... Those of us who understand the change of venue that we refer to, to the court where the jury is not 20, 12 but 24, or the 24 elders, that we understand the court of the 24 wings as referred to in the book of uh, Revelation, that in that scenario there are seven pillars of wisdom examining the works of the believers in these last days on the Sea of Glass, the remnant of Israel who are busy with the task of the rebuilding of the house of David and the tabernacles of David. So we say shalom, those of you on the like mission. We greet you from Yeshua, our Messiah, the faithful witness, the beginning of the creation of Elohim, the faithful witness of the resurrection, the first begotten of the Father. Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Trust no man, so we're not here asking you to trust us. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. We're here to provide our understanding of who is my people and what is this knowledge. Uh, if you're a Muslim, and we intend to have a Muslim on a brother from Guyana, uh, who, uh, listen, if you're a Muslim listening to the program, we say shalom. Salam alaikum, welcome to the program. And uh, as we say to you, if you're a Muslim, uh, be the best Muslim you can be. We're not Muslims. Uh, we say thank you to the uh people who practice Islam for having brought us into slavery and have participated in the slave trade and thereby fulfill the word of the Father concerning um, the people of the book. As we say to those of you who read the Quran, and we invite you to call, the number is 305-948-1170 or in Broward, <coughs> excuse me, 9547921170. And if you could share us any surah, any one of them, share with us any one of the surahs in the Quran, in the Holy Quran, that would point out the distinction between Judah and Israel. Any of those, call us, we're willing to listen. Those of you who are uh, our Jews listening to the broadcast, and we know we have our Jewish brethren, both those who attend um, our studies and those who listen afar off in Jerusalem and in um, Japan, we say shalom, greetings to you, our brethren. We're not Jews, we're Israelites. All Jews are Israelites, but not all Israelites are Jews. And so we come together with you at this time as we go with our face towards Jerusalem, seeking the house of the Father. Hence the theme song in this program is Turn Towards Jerusalem and Pray. So let us do that together. Let's seek the house of the Father together under his precepts. This evening we're going to have one such discussion concerning the sacrificial system and the house of the Father. Uh, if you're a Christian, <coughs> we say uh, likewise, you like the Jews and the Muslims participated in the slave trade in either the building and or uh, 
tearing of our flesh, shedding of our blood, uh, whatever else was pronounced upon us, the diseases of Egypt, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, promises, or the curses rather, of Deuteronomy chapter 28. It was prophesied that we would go and worship sticks and stones. And so we say to the Christians and to our brethren in Christianity, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the role that you have played in our punishment as well. Uh, so that today we don't blame the Christians, we don't blame the Muslims, we don't blame the Jews, we don't blame the white man. We understand that it is us and our responsibility, those of us who were I I I irrelevant, uh, rather, uh, not irrelevant, but those of us who were, uh, who were disobedient to the word of the Father, and that therefore we, uh, our punishment is just and deserved. Now, as we go forward this evening, we began a little late because of the traffic situation out there as they're shutting down 595 for the next 24 hours. 595 will be closed going eastbound. For those of you who are driving this way, you might want to make your uh, alternate routing plans. I didn't realize this myself. It's a 24-hour closure of the 595 eastbound. Uh, as we begin this evening, we'd like to remind you that we invite those of us who listen to the program to visit us on our web at www.heroisraelradio.com. That's our website. Our email address is heroisraelradio at gmail.com. And for those of you who wish to study with us, it's at 2455 Southwest 57th Way in West Park, Florida, 33023. There is no way we're going to be able to comprehensively and in-depth cover many of these subjects on these uh, radio broadcasts. They're simply too short, and they don't allow us enough time to develop some of the, uh, some of the, the more salient points uh, more firmly. But we do try, and, and uh, we sense that you might sense that there's a frustration. The frustration is not with the people who are listening, but with ourselves in our failure to impart the importance of some of the things that's written. As it is written, the Father says once more, for example, you'll shake the heaven and the earth. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So we invite you to stay tuned for the Hero Israel Watchman news report as we listen, bearing in mind that there is nothing new under the sun. And as it is written, uh, once more, he shall shake the heavens and the earth also. In Jamaica, for example, <laughs> we have a clear situation where sexual immorality was referred to in the 16th, 17th century incident in the destruction of Port Royal. Port Royal was destroyed. Over 2,000 people reported dead at the time because of what was called the Wicked City. What's the difference today between Port Royal and Montego Bay? So if God did it before, you don't think he can do it again. Stay tuned for the Watchman News Report. Right here. Shalom, children of Israel. Today is Tammuz 24th, or the fourth biblical month. And here's a Watchman News Report for this week. Sources are uh, provided by mxgm.org, Black America Web, the Jerusalem Post, BBC Haaretz, and the Assyrian International News Agency. And we begin to our lead stories. Every 40 hours in the United States, one black woman, man or child, is killed by police and by a sp smaller number of security guards and self-appointed vigilantes. Between January 1st, 2012 and June 30th, 2012, at least 110 black people were killed by police and their deputies. The report produced by the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement and the No More Trayvon Martins campaign is part of a larger effort. Kali Akuno, MXGM member and, re and report co-author, explained, the report shows how people of African descent remain subjected to institutionalized racist policies and procedures that arbitrarily stop, frisk, arrest, brutalize, and even execute black people. Desperate times are fostering desperate reactions in Chicago, where even before the calendar so much has officially turned to summer, a spiraling gang problem now has the city wickedly on course toward recording the most homicides of any year in its history. With homicides up by 39% over the first six months of this year, compared to last year, 
and on the strength of a $1 million grant from the Chicago Department of Health, allowing it to expand to its operations even, if, even into more high-crime areas. Beginning Friday of this week, the Chicago Police Department will commence working hand-to-hand with Seize Fire Chicago, an anti-violence community outreach group whose model and approach centers around recruiting ex-gang members and felons to act as mediators in curbing hot-pocket violence. The head of the NAACP says the group's fight against conservative-backed voter ID laws that have been passed in several states is akin to the great civil rights battles of the 1960s. Benjamin Todd Jellos, the CEO and president of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, told delegates at the group's annual convention on Monday in Houston that these are Selma and Montgomery times. He's referring to the historic civil rights confrontations in Alabama. Now to the Mideast. A survey published in the current edition of the Jerusalem Post reveals that an overwhelming majority of Israelis support government plans to send illegal migrants back to their countries of origin. The poll was carried out in late June after a series of demonstrations against the migrant workers in Tel Aviv, some of which turned violent. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has voiced support for a full transition to civilian rule in Egypt at the start of a visit to Cairo. Supporters of new President Mohamed Mursi are in a standoff with generals who have ruled since President Hosni Mubarak was ousted last year. Speaking after talks with Mr. Mursi, Mrs. Clinton said the situation required compromise and real politics. Iran could prevent even a single drop of oil passing through the Strait of Hormuz if its security is threatened, a naval chief said on Saturday as tensions simmer over Tehran's nuclear program. Tehran will increase its military presence in international waters, said Ali Fadavi, naval commander in Iran's elite Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. If they, the U.S., do not obey international laws and the IRGC's warnings, it will have very bad consequences for them, Fadavi said, according to Iran's Fars News Agency. Turkey's prime minister has warned Syrian leaders that the Syrian people will make them pay for massacres like the reported killing of dozens in a farming village by government forces this week. Recep Tayyip Erdogan caused the killings and attempted genocide and says such acts of violence are the footsteps of a regime that is on its way out. World leaders have heaped criticism on President Bashar Assad's regime for the mass killings Thursday in the village of Tremesse. And now on to religious news. The German government says Jewish and Muslim communities should be able to continue the practice of circumcision after a regional court ruled it amounted to bodily harm. Chancellor Angela Merkel's spokesman said it was a case of protecting religious freedom. European Jewish and Muslim groups had criticized the Cologne court ruling. The case involved a doctor who carried out a circumcision on a four-year-old that led to medical complications. Controversy has risen over plots of land that Turkey's Syriac, a Syrian community has claimed were offered to them for the establishment of their first church in Istanbul. Two alternative spaces also offered to the Syriac community by the Istanbul municipality belong to the Armenian and Greek foundations respectively, it has emerged. One of the land plots offered is allegedly a historical cemetery belonging to the Armenian community and the only property belonging to the Serb Stefanos Church Foundation in Istanbul's Yekosai district. The other piece of land belongs to the Greek Hagio Stephanos Foundation. And our final story, talks between the Roman Catholic Church and the Syrian Church of the East on ironing out their differences and a possible merger would resume on October 4th at the Vatican. The main agenda of the third and final stage of talks would be about the Pope's stand if both churches came together, said Mar Aprem, senior metropolitan of the Assyrian Church of the East and patriarchal delegate to India. The noted church historian and Aramaic scholar said a decision to resume the talks was taken at the recent eight-day 14th Holy Synod of the Assyrian Church at Chicago. The Synod also decided to have a dialogue with the Greek Orthodox Church. Shalom, my brother. Shalom, brother. Well, my brother... Um, this is a very interesting development here with the Assyrian Church getting ready to meet later uh, in this Roman year, October 4th, with the Vatican. This is um, quite a development in these times. I think it's historic. Mm-hmm. And it shows the real roots of the Roman Church. Truly, truly. And so now the question is, when they finally iron out that relationship, will Rome admit that that's the root of his church. <laughs> well, as they said, the Pope needs to work some things out. Yes. But, uh, yeah, but my brother, on to our situation here, uh, Israel dispersed amongst the nations. In that this respect, we can't vote for changing of the Pope, you know, but go ahead. Truly, truly. <laughs> um, these statistics are kind of overwhelming, my brother, when I first saw them. Every 40 hours, according to this report, 
a, a, a black person is killed by police or security guards or vigilantes. As of the first of 2012, 110 black people killed by police. I mean, across the nation. This is, this is quite overwhelming. And then Chicago, as we know, is on its way to a historic record as far as their murders going on in that city. And we have the, the head of the NAACP saying that these are Selma and Montgomery times after what happened in the 50s and 60s. He's saying that we're right back to where we started. We're back to square one. Mm -hmm. Well, this is it. Um, obviously, that none of the solutions, therefore, that we had applied before has worked. Truly, truly. Whatever they have been, whether well, it's been the philosophies of Martin Luther mm -hmm. King, mm -hmm. the philosophies of Martin Luther himself, mm -hmm. because some of us seem to believe that the Reformation is here. Yes. We're going to hopefully read in the, through the book of Hebrews, find out that that's not so. Truly. And um, our Marcus Garvey, mm -hmm. our Pan Africanism, or the Black Panther Party, Malcolm X, or the everybody. Congressional <laughs> Black Caucus. Mm -hmm or even the black president of the United States, because Truly. this is on his watch, and that's his mm -hmm. city, in yeah, fact. Yeah. That's where he's from. His, 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 his friend is over there, he's the mayor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what we see is that there's a people who are pining away in this, the greatest country in the world. I don't see anybody applying for any visas to leave. Mm. Everybody's still trying to come here. This, this, this as prophesied in scripture, as we have identified this country, you know, those of you who study with us as they the pleasant, pleasant land of the mm -hmm. east, of the west rather, mm -hmm. that we who came here on the east wind mm -hmm. understand that it is our wealth who built this country that yes. has made it the most pleasant country in the world, offering some of the best benefits that the black folks still aren't able to really fully participate in because of the legacy of slavery and what that has meant. Mm -hmm. You can't legislate morality. Truly. We can't vote in a representative and change the condition of the hearts of man. Mm -hmm. Now, we, you might disagree with us, but, um, which you're free to. Um, but at least try to understand what we're saying when we talk about voting. Yeah. We don't constitute enough of a block in this country. And what are we? 13%? More or less, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what are we supposed to do now? <laughs> Change the direction of the country, 13%. The rest of the country is not equally divided where we're concerned. Look at the stats and break it down properly. Mm -hmm. With the rest of the country on your side, who is on your side, you come to a 50%. Mm -hmm. There's 50% of this country which is clearly against the President of the United States based on the, um, one thing and one thing only and has been indicated from the history of what's been going on. Just look at it. Mm -hmm. So we don't say where you can vote and affect something in the short term, but these central things to us as a people, we can't vote in morality, we can't vote in judgment, we can't vote in wisdom. There is no social program, you could have NAACP squared. Where are we after centuries? We are worshipping as our conquerors, and that is the root cause of the problems that we're facing. We have not yet turned to the God who put us in this condition. We don't understand that a part of the curse was to go worship stick and stone. Mm -hmm. That in stick and stone there wasn't going to be a deliverance because he had not forgotten Israel. But in stick and stone, he was going to pull out a people out of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But somebody was enemies for that word's sake. And it is these people who are now suffering in front of the eyes of everybody. You want to know who Deuteronomy 28 applies to? Listen to the news and hear how Israel Watchman News report. You think it's the, the, the European Jews? <laughs> Look at what is happening before your eyes, people. Don't you see who these things apply to? Who have all these curses come upon? Everybody who comes in our community, just like Deuteronomy 28 says, it doesn't matter if they arrived last night from Bangladesh or from Taiwan. They set up shop and they move ahead of you and you have no power in your hands. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Legislate the police chief who is black in some instances is worse than <laughs> what has happened than the white police chief in many instances. So where are you going to turn? How are you going to be delivered? What's going to deliver you? Christianity has delivered you? All these people have more Christian churches in Chicago just like anywhere else. Mm -hmm. What? 
Islam going to deliver you? Well, they haven't delivered mm-hmm. anybody that's, that's in Africa. That's the capital of the nation, Islam. <laughs> the Jews going to deliver you? Man. Well, a Jew is the mayor right now, Rahm Emanuel. Look at what's going on in Israel. What hmm. you just read tonight. With the migrants. With the migrants. Mm-hmm. The Jews have no interest in you except to ally with you, just like the homosexual community does when it is in their interest. You have been used by every community to ally themselves to the civil rights movement to further their cause. You being the backbone of the civil rights movement. And you don't catch it all yet. We don't catch it all yet. 305-948-1170. Chapter and verse now. 954-792-1170. What we're saying is that there are some people pining away in this, the greatest country in the world which is also the land of their enemies, and that the only way out for them, for these people, not for anybody else. Everybody mm-hmm. else have different uh, roads that God built for them. But for these people, is that they have to do what Moses says. They are the people of God. God calls them my people. You see, when he told Moses, he says, go and tell Pharaoh to say, my people. These are not, unless you're God, you don't have no people. <laughs> That's the first thing. You have my people. Well, you have to be mm-hmm. God to have a people. Truly. Well, the people of God that we speak of on the earth today are the oppressed of the world. Believe it or not. And you're not going to vote in any legislation about this. Now, as we said to you before, in the judgment of nations in the Bible, as you and I talk yes, about. Yes, my brother. There is a judgment of the goat nations. And the sheep nations. And the sheep nations. Mm-hmm. And the judgment of the goat nations is based upon you who have done this to the least of our brethren. And the judgment of the sheep nations is based upon the same thing. That's found in the book of Matthew, the judgment of the nations. Now, the question that you have to ask yourself is, the United States of America, a goat nation or a sheep nation when it comes to the least of the brethren? That's the question. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me put it to you another way. A slave who escaped from slavery in the south of the United States, through whatever means, that is, whether it be the Underground Railroad or whatever, by the way, um, <clears throat> as Ophra Winfrey made famous, uh, of, of the lady who set up the Underground Railroad for us, Miss Tubman, she couldn't deliver the slaves because many of the slaves didn't realize, I wouldn't, she had a problem convincing them that they were slaves. Yes, sir. We have a problem today convincing our people that they are Israelites. Hmm. But as we were saying, the, the people who are here, who are here today, are a function of a particular curse in the scripture. And until we do what Moses says and return and perform all the commandments of the Father, until we cry out, as he had said, admitting that our punishment is just and deserved and praying like the prophets, we have no way to go forward. We're not going anywhere as a people. We're yes, going to brother. stay here and stagnate around the various philosophies of man. Now, I was saying that the United States is a goat nation in the judgment of nations. Now, you asked me who is a sheep nation, and I was using the slave to illustrate the point. The slave who arrived in Canada, once he crossed the Canadian border, the likelihood of him being caught and returned to a sla- as a slave existed all the way up to the state of New York. Mm-hmm. But once he crossed the Canadian border, that likelihood was dramatically reduced. Now, it's indicative that the emperor of Ethiopia, in his visit to the nations of the West, yes. rode the train across the breadth of the country of Canada. Mm -hmm. He came to the United States and he didn't do the same. (laughs) Now, there are sheep nations and goat nations in this world. And your voting is not going to make a nation a sheep nation or a goat nation, brethren. Mm -hmm. And all the politics in the world, you have no power in your hand or in your fingers. All it is written. Shalom, brethren. Trust the Father and yes. see what he can do for you. Children of Israel concludes the Watchman News report in this time, the beginning of sorrows. Pastor, don't say many times. Ten 
virgins fight for foolish fight for wise. Nation is rising uh. against nation. No one wonders why. Keep looking to the heavens. Your redemption coming by. Righteous yeah. perishes and no one really sees uh. the pain. Our of Father shall we yeah. continue to yeah. suffer. Yeah. Almighty God, remember these reproaches that we made. So we say shalom and once again welcome to our Bible broadcast this evening directed to the remnant of the children of Israel. Those of you who realize that you can't vote against the Pope because the Pope is not subject to your vote and that you'd be surprised what things in this world that the Pope controls. Why is it that everybody who goes to the White House goes to Rome? You think it's a formality? You think it's just a little trip? This evening we're talking about the sacrificial system, not the one that the Pope established. Because the Pope is about the bloodless system. The Pope is about what originally went on in the Garden of Eden, which is the struggle that was in the beginning, which is the struggle that shall be in the end. It is the blood versus the bloodless. The sacrificial system was never a means that was set up to gain eternal life. We have been through that. We have been through that. We have looked at those people who have been teaching us that the sacrificial system is over, that they refer to as the ceremonial system, and we have noted that if you look at the Acts of the Nazarenes, or the Acts of the Dreadlocks, or the Acts of the Apostles, that this was not communicated to them. Because Paul was bringing up offerings, including sin offerings. He was doing so under the direction of James, another dreadlocks in the area, standing up now under the instructions of a previous dreadlocks named John the Baptist, who had baptized the Messiah. And although he baptized the Messiah, when he saw Yeshua, he said, Listen, I'm not worthy to loosen the latches off your feet. Here's what Messiah said. Now, John was the greatest of men born to women. And then Yeshua came, and Yeshua, because of God in him, made a sacrifice for us. And in that sacrifice for us, he made us a better people than even John the dreadlocks. Because what he said was, the least in the kingdom is greater than John, who was the greatest of women, of men born to women. Now remember we talked about John's father and mother being perfect, keeping all the commandments recorded in the book of Luke, walking perfectly in the Torah. John came in the spirit of the dreadlocks, Elijah. Now there is a major difference between John and Elijah that we're going to talk about tonight. But we're going to just put it this way. Elijah looked like he used to walk with his altar. John didn't. Now how come Elijah had an altar? Elijah's altar wasn't in Jerusalem. It was on Mount Carmel. What was this dreadlocks doing with the altar? It wasn't of the tribe of Levi. It wasn't, it wasn't of the tribe of Aaron. What's going on here? Well, we find out that the Nazarenes were like a temple sect. They were in the temple daily praying. The priests believed they never ran away from the sacrificial system. All these people were there every day. These people who knew the temple was going to be destroyed because Messiah said, listen, not one stone shall remain upon another. In fact, they were instructed to leave Jerusalem when they saw it surrounded by the Roman armies. So they knew very well the temple was going to be destroyed. They didn't turn their back and say, oh, the sacrificial system is over. Let's go out here and wave a wafer. And go to the bloodless. They said no. Without the shedding of blood. There is not remission. There is no remembrance of sin. Remember the purpose now. It's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Nothing said so in the Torah. Nothing said so in the old. Nothing said so in the new. Now remember we had been through what Yeshua had said. First of all. Don't think he came to unite anything around here. He came to divide. Divide based upon what? The truth. Now understand that. So we're not here asking you to unite with us. That would mean we don't understand why we're here. It shall be father against son. Now find a good church. We're not asking you to send your tithes or send your offerings here. 
We are about the true worship. Go to our website. You will see bulls and goats being placed upon an altar. The way the Nazi dread them was doing it down in the temple. The way Paul was doing it. The way James was doing it. The way Abraham was doing it. The way Moses, Jacob, Isaac was doing it. The way Yahshua is doing it, recommended doing it, and will be doing it. If the sacrificial system disappeared, nobody told the 12 apostles. Is that obvious from the text? Then we started to look in the future and we see where Isaiah said that the mountain of the father's house shall be established in that day and the people shall flow to the mountain. What do you think he means when he said the mountain? What do you think that's about? That's about the temple of the father. There are many prophecies that talk about and they shall offer, they shall not hurt nor destroy nor my holy mountain. What do you think those prophecies are about? Prophecies in Zechariah about sacrifices in the day of the Father when his temple, his house is established. Messiah loved his father's house. He said the zeal of the father's house consumed me. He cast out the idolaters, cast out the money changers. Come out. But today in the church, that's not what we have. Today the primary money changer is the pastor. That's what's going on. That's why I can't cast you out when you're down there running back and forth between Carnival and his place. When you're down there running back and forth between your pork foot and his place. I can't cast you out. Too much money. But you see, truth different. One servant of the father said, truth don't have no friend and don't have no money to spend. Check that out. We'll tell you about the trends of the friends of truth. But in terms of you, the world, truth don't have no friend and no money to spend. That's just the truth, friend. Now, for those of you who are not interested in the money business, those of you who are not interested in the voting business, those of you who are interested in the soul business and in the salvation of your soul who realize that you were bought with a price, that you're not free to do what you want to do. You're a slave to him who purchased you, awaiting the day of the redemption. Some of you have been saved, but you have not been sanctified because you have turned your back against the commandments of God. You can't be sanctified without the commandments of God. That's what you, or you, that's what you don't understand what the word sanctification means. It means to set apart. How do you get set apart? By the commandments of the Father. Now, this evening, we had said to you that there, there's plenty evidence of the fact that if you look at the book of Ezekiel, for example, you'll find that there is a description of the last temple. Those of you who say, well, the sacrificial system is done away with, if you turn to the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 43, describing the future temple, he said unto me, verse 7, Son of man, the place of my throne, the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile. They nor their kings by their whoredoms, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. When is he establishing this for? Forever. That's Ezekiel chapter 43 verse 7. Now look, when you get to around to chapter 44, it says, But the priests, the Levites, verse 15, the sons of Zadok that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Father Elohim. So the, so the covenant with Aaron is not finished. It goes on into the future temple. You see, if you read the book of Hebrews and you don't understand the change of venue and you don't understand the difference between this world and the world to come, you will get confused. Now, in order to illustrate the, uh, another view of the sacrificial system and its importance and its purpose, let's take a look at why did the children of Israel come out of Egypt? What was said? Let's go to the book of Exodus and see how the case was presented about let my people, God who has his people, let my people go. In Exodus, and we, you, you should be familiar with the full story, we're just going to point to some of the highlights to make a point. In Exodus, in Exodus, we see that the father has an encounter 
with Moses. This encounter with Moses takes place in Exodus chapter 3. And in verse 10, write this down. He says, Come now therefore, and I will send you unto Pharaoh, that thou may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. This is the salvation portion that we talked about. And verse 12 said, And he said, Certainly I'll be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. You shall serve God upon this mountain. So the initial encounter was to come out with his people and to serve God upon this mountain. We're moving kind of quickly now. So go to chapter 3, same Exodus. Now let's go to verse 18. Discussing the people, it's when Moses went back, it says, And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come and thou and the elders of Israel unto the king of Egypt. And you shall say unto him, The Father God of the Hebrews had met with us. And now let us go, we beseech thee, three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Father our God. So now we understand that Moses understood that he was going to serve God, that he was going three days in the wilderness, and he was going to sacrifice to God. Now, if you drop down, the same theme is reported in verse 5, in chapter 5. In chapter 5, in verse 1, it says, Afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Father, God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. So now we now have these three phases being used interchangeably. One, they were going to serve him. Two, they were going to sacrifice unto him. And three, they were going to hold a feast in the wilderness. That's Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. So we have now found out that, that these are the reasons that were placed before Pharaoh. When we drop down, uh, just continue down because of time, to Exodus chapter 8, in verse 1, the point is made. And the father spoke unto Moses and says, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the father, Let my people go, that they may serve me. So we see the point is made over and over again. Clear, clarity between Pharaoh and Moses as to why they were going and what, what was going on. If you go to Exodus chapter 8, for example, it says, verse 28, And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Father your Elohim in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far and entreat for me. So Pharaoh understood that they were going to sacrifice, and Pharaoh said, listen, pray for me. Now notice they have to come out of Egypt to worship God. Anyhow, let's see what's going on. And verse 29, Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, I will entreat the Father, that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh and from his servants, from his people, and tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully anymore in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Father. So the people want to do what? They want to go sacrifice. They want to go serve him. They want to go keep a feast for him. So far, that's what it says. Now, we find as we get down to verse 25 of chapter 10 and moses said thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the father our god so wait a minute moses is telling pharaoh listen i need the flocks you have to give us the cattle to sacrifice so we're not going to sacrifice sacrifice of praises with nothing there's no such thing that's a christian thought as we shall see from Jeremiah. Verse 26 says, Our cattle also shall go with us, therefore shall not a hoof be left behind, for therefore must we take to serve the Father our God, and we must know with what we must serve the Father until we come again. So this is clear language. Not a hoof because they must serve the Father. Not even a hoof. Okay. Well, let's see what happens now. Go down to Exodus chapter 20 because they have come on this long march. So let's go to Exodus chapter 19 now. We're now three days further, three months further right now. Exodus chapter 19 says, In the third month when the children of Israel were gone from the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness by Sinai. In the third month, because you see, Pharaoh broke the contract. In three days, what Pharaoh did was send his army after the children of Israel. That's breaking the contract. And then Pharaoh also died. Not, this is not you in the movie now. He died when they crossed the Red Sea. Died in the sea. Therefore, as the holder of the contract, the contract is null and void. That's what freed them. Now, as well as the death of the firstborn. There were a combination of factors, but Pharaoh had the three-day contract. Now, here it is. We're three months later now. 
chapter 19, in the third month when the children of Israel were gone for the land of Egypt, the same day they came unto Mount Sinai. Now Moses, verse 3, Exodus chapter 19, verse 3, Moses went up unto God, and the Father called unto him unto the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6, And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all the words that the Father commanded him. So now we came out to serve God, to worship him. And God says, wait a minute now. Before you serve me, before you keep a feast, before you keep a sacrifice, here is what you have to understand. You're going to have to be a kingdom of priests. Do you accept this covenant? The Bible says all the people said all that the Father said we'll do, we did. We'll do. Verse 8, and all the people answered and said, all the Father had spoken, we will do. Now Moses then told them, listen, separate from your wives for three days. Wash yourself. You'll read that down later on in the passage. And then the next day now, be ready again. The third day. Well, the third day, chapter 20, it says, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Father thy God, which brought thee to the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. One. Thou shalt make an engraven image and likeness when there is heaven and the earth above. Two, three, you shall not bow down to serve them. Four, do not take the name of the Father. Three, I'm sorry, do not take the name of the Father God in vain. Four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. Seven, the Sabbath of rest. For in six days the Father made the heaven and the earth. The sea rested, created the heaven and the earth. I'm just reading these through quickly. Verse 12. Honor your father and your mother. Verse 13, we shall not kill, we shall not commit adultery, we shall not steal, we shall not bear false witness, and we shall not covet. So now, we came out to serve the father. That was the reason we came out here now. To serve the father, to sacrifice to the father, to keep a feast. But before we can keep a feast and sacrifice to the father, the father says, wait a minute now. Hold on a moment. I want you to remember and agree to these things. The people said yes. Now read the next verse. Verse, drop down to verse 20. Drop down to verse 22. After Moses went up, and the father said unto Moses, Thus said unto the children of Israel, You have seen that I have talked to you from heaven. You shall not make with me gods of silver, that mean your cross and your star, David, take it off. Neither shall you make you any gods of gold. So the first thing God repeats is idolatry. And then notice this. Verse 24. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, thy oxen, in all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. So now, before they could make an altar... Before they could bring their burnt offerings, before they could get their peace offerings in all places where he would record his name, God said there's a prerequisite. Here is a prerequisite to be a kingdom of priests unto me. You have to obey the Ten Commandments that I gave you. So the purpose of the Ten Commandments is to serve him and to worship him. Before you can build an altar, that's why the Bible says obedience is greater than sacrifice. Brethren, the Father seeketh such to worship Him, to worship Him in spirit and in truth. The sacrificial system has gone nowhere. Messiah said, do not even think it. And then Messiah added one more thing that Moses left out of the list. Messiah said, before you bring your sacrifice, if you have something against your brother, Go and get that straight before you bring your korban. He doesn't say not to bring it. He says, before you do it, get that straight. Because there's only one way to worship the God of heaven. That is to worship him in spirit and in truth. Shalom, brethren. We'll talk to you next week. Yahweh. 
as we leave you this evening. Jerusalem is crying out for you. Children scattered amongst the nations. We have a commandment. We're commanded to pray in this manner. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their forefathers that they trespassed against me that they were contrary unto me and that I were contrary unto them if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they accept of the punishment of their iniquity then remember my covenant with Abraham with Isaac and with Jacob confirmed by your son Yeshua Shalom brethren next week